Well, we are back outside again today to play with the Lavener Lava, the one compact, the one that they're now calling the Lava, the water heaters, the 5 kilowatt Lavener water heater, now thankfully called just uh, the Lava, because that's much easier to say. So I have mostly been coming out here every other day and running uh, tests, experiments, so to speak, on it because well it needs like a whole day to cool down not a whole day but i'm giving it a whole day to cool down and i have had some interesting results in in efficiency let me uh, walk you through some of these so i have plumbed the heat exchanger here in various combinations i've had it coming out of the heater body and into the heat exchanger through the heat exchanger and then back up into the pump and then through the pump through the heater and back into the coolant tank so i've had it come out the heater and then through the heat exchanger and then back up and back through and back into that heat exchanger and well it it didn't work the way that i thought it would uh, so uh, maybe i will bring the tripod for this one Welcome to my whiteboard of chaos. Okay, it's not really chaos. Uh, right, on the leftmost column here, this was running it absolutely stock standard. The coolant tank and the whole heater and pump, etc., holds about 7 litres of water. I, did, I tried my best to measure accurately with a measuring jug and a funnel. So I got 7 litres. And... Basically, I took measurements at 40 degrees, 60 degrees, 68, 74, and I got, well, at 80% efficiency, which I, I gave, if you give it 100% efficiency, you get the full 5 kilowatts, but I went for 80% efficiency just because that's probably a more realistic, I got 4.4 kilowatts, so that is absolutely within uh, my error range, <coughs> excuse me, coronavirus. So bog standard, 4.4 kilowatts. The second column, I went from the exhaust heat exchanger into the heat exchanger on the heater. So it was coming out the tank, through the exhaust heat exchanger, and then into the heat exchanger itself. Wait, is that right? Did I go that way first? Was that her heat exchanger out to the heater? Anyway, it doesn't really matter because it didn't matter which way around I did it, I got the exact same results. Well, the almost the exact same. So going for so heat exchanger, exhaust heat exchanger, and heat exchanger, I got 4.3 kilowatts. And going the other way, I also got 4.3 kilowatts. Different numbers, different times, and it still worked out at the same 4.8, 4.9 kilowatts. No, 4. 4.3 kilowatts. I so I'll, I'll some, somehow in this setup I managed to lose a hundred watt of heating power by adding in the exhaust heat exchanger. Now I took into account it added another 750 millilitres of water in the system between the pipes and the heat exchanger itself. Granted all of my start temperatures were different temperatures to start with but it doesn't matter because it still works out the same because you just you, you do the maths you do the, the 40 to 60 and you take a time reading and then you subtract the time from your temperatures and you get your kilowatt reading which is at 80% of course so I lost 100 watts of heating power by adding the heat exchanger which I'm not gonna lie it has bamboozled me if if anyone could maybe answer uh, or give me a reason why in the comments why this has happened because I don't fully understand it because I had my thermometer gun I had it and I pointed it at the heat exchanger and the exhaust coming out of the heater was like 150 degrees and the exhaust coming out of the heat exchanger was about 50 degrees you could you could pass your hand through the exhaust gas and it was it, it was 50 degrees hot it wasn't burning hot it was just hot where did that 100 degrees go? Because it sure as fuck didn't get in the water. Because that, that 
like I say, all I did, I've, I've reduced the efficiency. I, I took it down. Because uh, what was my other measurement I did was the degrees in, no, no, the time taken to change the temperature. So stock, it did five degrees per minute uh, from running from start to finish. That's a full start to finish from full. Switching the switch on, basically off cold to 74 degrees when it stopped. Uh, I got five degrees a minute on stock. I got 4.8 degrees a minute on one of the heat exchanger setups and I got 4.9 degrees per minute on the other heat exchanger setup. It, it made absolutely like no fucking difference whatsoever. It made it worse. And I don't, I don't fully understand it. So now, as you have seen from the monstrosity, uh, the monstrosity, I've gone for insulating it. Uh, let me walk you through this, this hideous, it's funny that it's so hideous. So I've got the good uh, insulation, it's not polystyrene, it's the other one, the polyurethane, is that polyurethane? Basically it's expanding foam in between two sheets of aluminium foil. And I've covered most of the heater. I've done the base and the sides and the bits of the sides I could get to and so on and so forth. And closed it all and then run the test again and that's what the bottom uh, of the board is it's this set of numbers down here uh, so with insulation um, I didn't bother work out the kilowatts because I, I, I've stopped caring because it managed a whopping 5.2 degrees per minute compared to the 5 degrees stock uninsulated tank which I thought it would have done a little bit better with insulation but Granted, I suppose what the insulation is really doing is just keeping your hot water tank hotter for longer. It just means it's not actually losing anything to the atmosphere as much when it's heating up. So it didn't really make a blind bit of difference. Well, I, as, as you can see, it made 0.2 degrees of difference. And everything else was much or much. So, uh, yeah. So adding the heat exchanger, hasn't. it's made it worse. And adding the insulation didn't make any difference. So, unless my numbers and my method are wrong, I wouldn't waste your time adding a heat exchanger in on the exhaust that way. Or, I mean, of course, insulating the tank is going to make a difference for long-term heat storage, but for actual running purposes, uh, it doesn't make a blind bit of difference. It'll still just cool down with the as the cool water goes through the heat exchanger, it'll cool down at the same rate and it'll heat back up at the same rate. It just might stay hotter longer when it's sitting doing nothing. But that's well, not but it's not a but. So this leads me on to more experiments that I was doing. Oh, uh, you'll notice that the current configuration of the heat exchanger is there's a yellow hose fitting here that the mains uh, water comes in goes through the heat exchanger, it comes out this pipe and it goes into the hot water, well, the cold water supply. You're basically taking cold mains water, preheating it and then passing it through the heat exchanger. So it's already heated to some extent before it comes out the hot side and then travels down the shower. The best way to do this would be to get rid of this heat exchange, this, not heat exchanger, sorry, the thermostatic valve protection system. Because at the moment, what it's doing is mixing hot water with hot water to regulate the temperature. So it's not doing a lot. I had it cranked up to max to try and stop it, basically wasting its own time uh, adjusting it. And I found that makes the biggest difference because you can preheat your water to some extent before passing through the heat exchanger and then further heating it so you can really extend the run times. But there is a caveat in this setup. Uh, wait a minute, I could can zoom you along a bit so you can see the whole thing so it makes more sense. So, cold water comes in from tank or pump or mains or whatever and then goes in the heat exchanger and into this pipe. 
which is fine. And then it goes through the heat exchanger, gets heated up even further, and goes out to your shower head or your tap or whatever. Now, obviously, you can turn the shower heads and taps on and off. Now, this stops flow. This stops flow through your exhaust heat exchanger. And it will fucking boil. It will just keep getting hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter until you're making steam and you're boiling. Which means that this pipe and your heat exchanger are now building pressure. Uh, I don't know what pressure they're rated up to, but luckily I have a heat exchanger here. And this is the one I believe that is actually installed in the lavender, so that would be like that. There's in from the heater, uh, and then that one be your cold water in and your hot water out, and then that'll be the water out, the cold water out into the tank, and it gets slushed around and comes back out the pump, and then through the pump, and then through here again, and through there, and I don't know how, yeah, some like that. Anyway, it's got numbers on it. 3 MPA, what's that in old money? Uh, feet and inches. What's, what's 3 MPA in PSI, for example? And those of you who are shouting out now, don't tell me. 3 MPA to PSI. 3, three megapascals. 435 PSI. Okay, what's 400 PSI in bar then? 400 PSI to bar. To bar. 30 bar. So this is uh, rated at, well, actually more than that, four and a half for like burst pressure. Working. Three, three MPA. Like 27 bar of pressure. Which is, that's okay. That's good. That. So I'm not worried about the heat exchanger suffering if you get boiling water, but I'm worried about bursting pipes. Uh, so what you would have to do is between the outlet of the heat exchanger this, this heat exchanger, the exhaust one, and the inlet here, you need a pressure release valve because obviously it's just going to get higher and higher and higher as you make more steam and more pressure. So something that could bleed off a bit of pressure just to keep it, you know, not at pressure. And then that's fine once you open this, uh, you open your tap and go shower and uh, the pressure will just go back to being normal as uh, the water now goes through the heat exchanger and uh, uh, equilibrium etc so on and so forth but yeah that was the only drawback I could see is you'll get boil once you've stopped the showering you'll get boiling water in the exhaust heat exchanger which would then get transferred as steam into your pipes here and you wouldn't want steam and that to explode because then you've got a pressure drop and then ah uh, yeah so you need to set the pressure in this higher than the pressure stop on your pump I think I think it's three bar on the one that I bought three bars so you would set this to four bar so when it got up to four bar it let the pressure off but it's still retaining enough pressure to keep the pump on standby because otherwise you would drop that pressure and then your pump would run and it would oh that would be a lot of mess that would be that's almost as bad as forgetting to let the pressure out your pecs pipes before you chop them ask me how I know but yeah so it turns out that the, well, not turns out, the rated power of the unit is the 5 kilowatts that they, that um, Lavender claim it is, which is the same as what Wobasto claim their heater is, 5 kilowatts. It's totally that. And, yeah, I mean, I ran this a few hours ago and took it up to 74 degrees. It's insulated. It's outside just now, and the outside temperature of the world is, oh, about 16 degrees. So this is still sitting at 50, 53 degrees. Uh, so from 74 to 53 in about three hours. That's not bad for uh, insulation wise. But yeah, adding heat exchange, the exhaust heat exchanger anywhere into the system, apart from on the inlet side of the cold water is a waste of time and money. Because one of those is like £170 last time, I think it was £160, £170 for one of them. 
So don't waste your money buying one of them unless you're planning on building it onto the water, the cold water feed side to preheat cold water before uh, doing that. So probably next time, well, what I'm going to do is move this over there because I'd like to get my truck uh, back under the carport because it's winter now and it's starting to get cold in the mornings and again condensated windows and soon it'll be freezing windows so I'd like my truck back under here but I'll put that over there and we can still run outside the experiments on it but it'll be weather uh, dependent because if it's raining I'm not doing it and I'll just put a fucking tarpaulin over the lot of it and it can just sit out there until we do our next test what I think I will do for the next test is get the 60 litre tank and the pump and we will fill the tank with a combination of water and ice and we will run zero degrees water through the heater and see how badly that goes at murdering the temperatures from it then we'll do the same running the zero degree water through the exhaust heat exchanger first and then through the heater and see how also badly that works but slightly less badly but uh, if anyone has any comments, suggestions, or answers as to why I reduced the efficiency of the heater by adding the heat exchanger, please, please for the love of God, leave a comment down below and help me solve my madness. And as always, thanks for watching.